Good morning everyone, it's been a while hasn't it? First, I want to quickly apologize for the lack of uploads, but that doesn't matter, because we're back with something juicy. As you can tell from the title, the next hour is going to be a very deep dive into various topics that all revolve around Hypixel Skyblock, which is the biggest MMORPG in Minecraft. These topics range from fun little quirky things, like how people organized a group to make fun of free-to-play players, or when people could break bedrock and sell it for tons of money, to stories that will make you lose faith in humanity, such as newborn for coins and other ones down there. So hopefully the background footage of me doing parkour and PvP will set the mood for these topics right. Keep in mind that this list is based on how extreme and obscure these topics are, so I'm expecting some people to know the ones on the top, but I'm more than sure that basically no one is going to know about any of the stories in the bottom. We're close to 250k subs, so you know what to do. Click that button. It's free. Why not? Oh, and please use code HELCASTLE if you want to buy something from Hypixel store, like basic human rights or gems. It gives you a 5% discount, so there is no reason not to use it. And it also supports us. Okay, let's start. I'll talk first about Slime Test. Slime Test is an admin command that was supposed to help admins test and prepare for the Dante vs Technoblade fight, because Dante was a big slime boss. Basically, what that command does is if you type slash slime test followed by a number, it spawns in a slime with a size relative to the number you put. So slash slime test 1000 gives you a very, very big slime. Now admins forgot to make this command private, which meant that anyone anywhere on Skyblock could just type slash slime test 1000 and spawn in massive slimes whenever they want. This is an issue because, well, bit slimes, multiple of them, can easily crash servers, and on Hypixel, when a server crash occurs, there is a possibility for you to roll back time and duplicate items, which is an even bigger issue. This was fixed by the admins after a few hours by making the command private and banning most of the people who spawned enough slimes to cause lobby crashes. F. The second thing we'll talk about is actually a very similar command that's related to the slime test command, called the kill Dante command. As the name implies, the command is used to kill Dante, which is the villain of Skyblock that Techno was supposed to help defeat. This command was probably used for when admins had to test the fight in private and needed to kill Dante for testing purposes. But it seemed like the admins had also forgotten to keep its access private to admins only, and one of the 215,000 players that were online at the time decided to try out what would happen if they type slash kill Dante, because it was a public command. And it worked. He killed Dante. We don't know who was the first to do it, but we do know that it started spreading around like wildfire, and everyone started using it to kill the Dante that was in their lobbies. Yeah, that whole event was a little bit weird, but to give credit where credit is due, this entire event that was supposed to be played by a quarter of a million people was only coded within a few days. Sure, it wasn't perfect, but it was pretty good for an event in the Minecraft game mode inside a Minecraft server inside Minecraft. Next, we have 50 mil Midas. The reason this one's up here is because he already addressed it publicly, but a lot of people requested me to include it here, so here it is. 50 mil Midas is a very popular Skyblock YouTuber, mostly known for his shorts or random skits but he kinda went down the wrong path and started caring too much about fancy accounts and cool looking armor to the point where he was ready to buy other players accounts for real life money. He was eventually caught with his pants down and got his YouTube rank removed and all of his profiles were wiped. He still makes content and acknowledges his mistakes, so I guess it's fine. He clearly learned from it. Hmm, let's move on to breaking bedrock. If you've ever played Minecraft, then you know that bedrock is essentially impossible to break and obtain. And weirdly enough, that was also the case on Skyblock for the longest time, up until January 15th, 2021. On that date, a new update released that introduced a whole new revamp for pickaxes, giving them mining power. Basically, certain blocks can only be broken by a pickaxe with certain breaking power, and for some reason, 
Bedrock needed very low breaking power to be broken. After a few minutes of the update being out, people found out about this and started spreading the word. So, everyone went to break the one bedrock piece under their island the instant they knew about it. Me and Tyler were live streaming at the time this was happening, and we were one of the first people to mine bedrock. Tyler even built a bedrock heart on his island. I just sold most of mine because I like money. The funniest part about the story is that the bedrock's description initially was, please contact Jayaverman, which is an admin, and explain how on earth you got this item, thank you very much. And now it became, I guess you have this now. I feel bad for Jaya, his DMs probably got bombed that day. Next in this layer is exclusive items. Ooh, sounds fancy. So exclusive items, as the name implies, are items that could only be obtained once and never again. This includes things like the Dead Bush of Love, which was given out to people who helped test out Skyblock before it was released, and only very few people have it. The Builder Clay, which is an item the X admin uses, started giving out to builders he thought have amazing looking islands. It looks awesome when you wear it and makes these cool particles around you, but only three of it exists sadly, making it one of the rarest things in the game. We also have the Quality Map, which is another admin item that was supposed to be given out to the builder team, but, again, only the uses has one, making it what I think is the only one-of-a-kind item to exist in Skyblock. There's plenty more of rare cool items, but I decided to talk only about these three because they're the ones that are the least known. G House Zombie This one is the top post of the r slash Hypixel Skyblock subreddit, so I thought it should be at the tip of this iceberg. Basically, zombies in Skyblock spawn around this area here in the graveyard and can only exist inside the graveyard because that's how they're programmed to be. If they go out into the main lobby, they might start killing unsuspecting or AFK people, which would be an issue. But for some reason, there was a rare case of a zombie that just decided, screw it, I made my own destiny, and went out of the usual boundaries he has and took a very lovely walk around the guild house that's next to the graveyard. He sadly ended up being assassinated by a noob. Rest in peace, G-House zombie. Skyblock is dead. Okay, this one isn't about Skyblock's player base numbers, but about that time Hypixel just actually died for an entire week. On June 18th, 2021, Hypixel got hit by a massive wave of DDoSing, which caused the network to die. This kept happening for about a week, until June 23rd. But in the meantime, the Skyblock addicts had no Skyblock to play. They had no tasks to mindlessly grind all day, and they needed something else. So, they started seeking other games to spend their time on. They started flocking to servers like Windcraft, which is also an MMORPG in Minecraft, went to other games on Steam, some of them even went outside. Funny enough, I still know some people that have discovered other games and hobbies because of this break they were forced to take from Skyblock, and now they spend more time on their new activities. Of course this didn't kill Skyblock, it was just a reality check to a lot of players that made them realize they play it too much. 3 Missing Dungeon Floors Anyone that's a little OG to Skyblock will remember that Dungeons was actually first intended to be 10 floors, but we have 7. This was because the admins at the time were a bit too ambitious and thought they can easily release 10 floors, but after seeing all the bugs, dupes, crashes, balancing changes and effort that requires to be put in each and every floor, they realized that they should focus on polishing and building up other sides of the game rather than focusing on just one, which I think was the right decision. They ended up merging Floor 8, 9, and 10's bosses into Floor 7 fight, where you fight them all for a 0.01% chance to get a rare drop. Dante the Bathwater Unless you live under a bedrock or you're born in 2015, you know who Dante the M is. Aside from being a big Minecraft YouTuber, he was also one of the first content creators to step foot into Skyblock and make content about it and one of his videos was about him selling his own Minecraft skin bathwater, 
by putting it up on the auction house for everyone to bid on it. At the time, his bath water was the most expensive item on the auction house and sold for what was back then a lot of money. We're done with the first layer, so let's go to the second. Stiff fishing rod. Oh boy, I'll try my best to cover this one without getting demonetized. Okay, so in Stablock there is mayors, right? And each of the mayors has like their own personality and skin and quirks and perks and stuff. And well, um, there's this one mayor called Marina that looks like this. Nothing too out of the usual, but there is this known rule on the internet that if it exists, then there must be funny drawings of it. So the Stablock artist community did deliver some funny drawings of her. One of the first and most notable ones was done by an artist called ATR. ATR did the drawing, but posted the censored version of it on the Hypixel Stablock subreddit. The post got so much traction, and so many people were rioting asking for the funny version of the image. So, ATR decided to put up an item on the auction house, and the person who bids the highest on it and wins that item gets to have the funny version of the image. The item ATR put up was called Stiff Fishing Rod because she thought it would perfectly fit the whole scenario. It sold for over a billion coins, which is a little ridiculous. The person who bought it ended up just spreading it over to everyone, so don't worry, you don't need to pay a billion to see it. 100 Cape You're Handsome 100k You're Handsome used to be a very well-known player in the community. He was most famous for his ability to fight dragons really well and always get the highest score. He was famous enough that when he started a YouTube channel, it started getting a lot of traction and it seemed like he was on the path to success. But he butchered it. He decided that IRL trading for a little bit of cash is more worth it than pursuing a YouTube career. And one day he was caught selling items for real life coins which caused him to get banned and wiped forever. Also, apparently, he scammed someone who applied to be his editor for around $50, which feels expected and also sad. Sub vs FB Okay, so Sub vs FB stands for Superior Dragon Armor vs Frozen Blaze Armor. For the longest time, the Stablock community was split in half between people who think Superior is better and others who think Frozen Blaze is better. This debate went on for ages and we even tried to put an end to it a long time ago, but still failed, because the superior nerds thought their stat boost was better. Frozen Blaze was clearly the best armor set back then. This debate still continues today, but between Frozen Blaze and other armor sets, although it has kinda died down a bit more now, since both Frozen Blaze and Superior are outclassed by Necron armor in all categories. Competition and fun kinda dies out when there's a clear winner. Oh well. Magic on find and looting minus 4. Stablock is entirely built on RNG drops. RNG stands for random number generator, which basically means luck. If you are a lucky player and instantly drop the rarest things, you basically just win the game easily. And because some drops have stupidly low chances, admins decided to introduce a mechanic to the game that gives you higher chances of dropping rare items. That mechanic is called Magic Find. The higher Magic Find you have, the higher your chances at dropping something rare. Should be pretty simple, right? Well, no. For some reason, at multiple points in the game, Magic Find was bugged in one way or another. Essentially, if you had more Magic Find than a certain number, your chances at dropping something actually became lower and lower. This was mostly true with the Petlock stat, which is a stat that worked similarly to Magic Find. Players with really high Petlock and Magic Find were realizing that due to their really high luck stat numbers, they're dropping less items than people with much less luck. The admins then went ahead and fixed this, and people with high numbers started getting more drops, so they weren't crazy. A similar thing to this is Looting 4 enchantment. For some reason, Looting 4 also gave you less drops than Looting 3, 2 and 1 for the longest time, and the entire looting system apparently worked backwards? 
making looting one the best and the cheapest, which made no sense. They also fixed this in a patch around December 2021, which means this issue was in the game for over a year. Whoops. Also, I tried to explain both of these in the most basic way possible, but if you really want to know more about what exactly was the issue with them, I'll leave a link to the forum post that talks about it. It involves a lot of math and weird coding things. I'm not trying to bore you to death. Admin voice call. This one is just a random one. A long time ago, a bunch of people decided to spam ping Minicloon, a Hypixel admin, asking him to join a voice call on Discord. Of course, usually spam like this just leads you to getting blocked. But for some reason, Minicloon just joined the voice call and talked with them for a bit before disappearing. Just a funny entry here that shows how active Mini is in the community. Also, all the pictures are weird now. Yeah, that is kind of weird, huh? I'm out of here. Good right, You know what? Good day, yo. Nobody will believe you that was here, so. GG. Good maybe, morning. Maybe. God damn <laughs> 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 I recorded it! I recorded it! I recorded it! I recorded it! Re Non-patrol. You ever look at people with no money to buy ranks, aka nons, and go, Ew, these guys are poor and they suck. I want to belittle them. Well, the non-patrol group isn't really the place for you, even though it looks like it is. In 2020, a Stablock player decided to create a group to put nons in their place. Okay, what does that mean? Educate others on what a non is and isn't, to prevent false hate and misinformation. Oh, so it isn't hating on nons? What's the point then? Exactly, I don't know. But what I do know is that it gained a lot of traction and had over 300 members that were going around hating on nons regardless. It also had a ton of positive interaction from the community somehow. They even had a constitution and a president and all sorts of things. It ended up getting disbanded after its creator realized that it's a terrible idea and does nothing but spread toxicity to free-to-play players. I'm just surprised no one at any point told him it's a bad idea. First place frads. Any player who was around in the first year of Starblock's popularity would have heard of First Place Frads, a guild founded by player Minitrix and infamous for its toxic players who were desperately in need of sunlight. The guild remained the number one guild in Starblock for most of the time it existed and was named after a practice that Minitrix did in which he would fight other people's dragons for free for them, get first place in order to get the best loot for them, give them the loot, and keep the dragon fragment drops as a form of payment. This was all well and good until May 2020 in which a combination of cheating allegations against Minitrix, IRL trading allegations against Dr. Mommy issues, and other cheating allegations within the guild led to somewhat of a mental breakdown from Minitrix, who subsequently kicked almost every single member from the guild. This led to all of its players scattering until the guild eventually reformed somewhat to become the guild Lost in Space, which you've definitely heard of, and it still remains active and competitive to this day. This all culminated in Minitrix getting banned live on stream for bug abuse, and then making a short return after his year-long ban was up. SA50 Race Back in the day, SA50, which means still average 50, was this last goal every Starblock player had. Basically, once you hit it, there is literally nothing else to do in the game. That's it. You matched it out. You won. And since Stablock is an online multiplayer game, there is always going to be competitive people. One of those people was Linman. He was the guy who won the race and became the first person to hit still average 50. But the price he had to pay maybe wasn't worth it. On an interview he did, he went on to talk about how he basically would try to minimize his sleep hours and try to stay up all night grinding skills non-stop in order to be the first person to hit the big number milestone. Giving up sleep to get it? Mm. I have to like give up hours of sleep each day just to grind for it. Oh, I guess it became probably a pretty big part in your life. Yeah, 
I mean, I was I was happy I finished it in the end, but I don't I regret like wasting like giving up my sleep to obtain it. Honestly, I don't think it was worth it, and I don't think he thinks it was worth it either, as he hasn't even logged on Stablock for over a year now. But I do respect the grind. Got a 50 race. Catacombs 50 race is basically the same thing as still average 50 race, but much more intense because there's a lot of people that were going for it. It requires you to play this repetitive game mode called Dungeons that gets really boring after you do it so many times. But that didn't get in the way of Death Streaks. He kept pushing himself over the limit to hit Catacombs 50 first, and after lots of sleepless nights, he sure did hit it. He even did it on a live stream and amassed thousands of viewers that wanted to watch him hit the big milestone. At this point, he became very well known in the community, so he took the opportunity and started making good quality content on YouTube and gained a lot of subs, more than enough to achieve YouTube rank, so good for him. Official Stablock Crypto so, we all know about the funny currencies that everyone has been trading lately everywhere online and losing money with. Well, Stablock admins decided to make their own currency, but in Stablock. Don't worry, this one does not involve anything bad. It's simply purely all in-game money and has nothing to do with real-life money. It's just an experiment. They basically created an item called Stock of Stonks, which initially sold at a stable price that everyone could buy. Then. They removed the ability to buy it after a certain amount of them were sold, and they just waited to see what happens. As expected, the more time went on, the rarer this item has gotten, because more and more of it got lost, less and less people were able to buy it, and its price went nowhere but up. It was kind of a genius move on the admin's end to add something like this, as it's super interesting to see how the price of this thing fluctuates and how people actually use it sometimes for trading big amounts of money instead of just using coins. Pretty neat. Personal deleter. Oh no, not this. I just remembered. This item was a complete mess. Man, how did it even... Okay, so from the name, it should be obvious that this item is related to deleting stuff right? Well, yeah, that's correct. Basically, it's a quality of life item that serves to make it easier to get rid of things you are obtaining quicker. Let's say you are grinding spiders, but you don't want your inventory to be filled with thousands of cobwebs that are worth absolutely nothing. You put one cobweb inside your personal deleter, and it will start deleting every single cobweb that enters your backpack. Neat, right? Well, yes, but there was a massive oversight some very, very evil players started using them as a weapon to get other people's items deleted. What they would do is, they would tell their personal deleter to delete expensive swords, bows, weapons, and other expensive things, and then drop it on the floor in the hub for other people to pick it up. And once those innocent people pick up that personal deleter, their sword or bow and other tools would get deleted. It was nothing but pure evil. The item was then quickly disabled to be fixed later on. But yikes. F in the chat to whoever lost a year of grind because they just picked up something in the hub. FC. FC on top. Flexing chimps is... Was? Or is? I think it is, yeah, it still exists. Flexing Chimps is a Stablock guild that revolves around inviting the top players to it and having the highest stats possible. Basically, it's full of turbo tryhards that try to invite other tryhards in. At one point, they started wearing monkey pets on their heads because of their chimp mascot and started streaming FC on top at everyone they see in lobbies. This quirky act ended up spreading a lot very quickly and everyone, even non-guild members, started doing it. At one point, you'd enter any lobby in Skyblock and find people with monkeys on their head mashing their keyboard to type FC on top in full caps everywhere. It wasn't annoying, it was actually entertaining. But just like every trend, it just randomly died out one day. RATS I was debating putting this one a bit deeper in, but I feel like it's already very known by a lot of people. But I also still feel like I need to talk about it because it's such a big thing. 
Basically, what a RAT stands for is Remote Access Trojan. It's like a virus that goes into your computer and does all the nasty things you do not want it to do, such as stealing your personal information, credit card, bank account, all your passwords and accounts, etc. And for a while now, there has been a very, very big issue in Skyblock where people would hide these rats inside game mods. They then advertise these mods as free coin mod and a lot of kids fall for it. But lately, they've been getting a lot more advanced, going all the way to stealing actual good functioning mods that are known in the community and injecting their rat into them and sending them to people, or even creating fake websites and fake accounts that impersonates the real mod developers in order to convince people to download and run their infected version of the mod. It's pretty scummy and it goes in quite deep. There is now entire groups dedicated to making these rats and spreading them around as much as possible. They have an entire hierarchy system and work like mafias. They even exploit cheap child labor and everything. They are literally like mafias, but instead of being cool badass bosses with cigars in their mouth, they're just 16 year olds behind a PC with Doritos everywhere and a body pillow on their bed. If you want a much more in-depth dive into this topic, we've made a video about it, so go take a look. Whoa, already done with layer 2? Time to dive into spicier things. Mmm, okay, let's talk about... Yeah, 2NFG's death. Okay, so 2NFG is a player that was more or less known in the Stablo community. He had a few videos made about him, and he even had an entire campaign for him to become the minister of Stablo. And he did. He was one of the ministers at the Technoblade vs Dante event, believe it or not, by amassing a big amount of votes. But at the time people were voting for him, he was actually banned a while ago. So Adnans decided to put him in prison for it. It was kinda funny. I don't know the exact reason for his ban, but he's had a few bans before I think, and it was probably something dumb like accidentally toggling on cheat or IRL trading or something. I don't know, the man has done so many dodgy things, it's hard to tell. One thing about 2NFG is that he likes to do random stunts. Publicity stunts, maybe? I'm not sure if I want to call them publicity stunts, because some of the things he does are just out of pure boredom or simply to troll. So one day, he decided to coordinate a lie that he made all of his close friends spread. He told them to tell everyone that he was dead. The reason for his death was COVID. And at the time, it was kinda believable, because that's when COVID was popping off. The news spread super quickly, mostly due to his close friends being guild leaders of the biggest guilds and pinging everyone informing them about the loss of their friend to NFG. Of course, some players didn't really believe it, and some others did. But no one really voiced their doubts, because the last thing you wanna do is say, Oh no, they're lying, he didn't die, and if it turned out he's actually dead, you'd be seen as an asshole. So, the community believed he was actually dead for a few weeks, until he just randomly came back one day and started a YouTube channel. Yeah, he's a weird one. I'm not sure what has happened to him now, but from what I've heard, he has sold all of his accounts and just moved on. Okay, now we have... Uh, Frozy. Oh boy, we really did start this layer with heavy topics, huh? Frozy is, or well was, a Stablock YouTuber. He was known for his insanely good editing in his videos and his love for breaking the game. He loved finding glitches and bugs that no one knows about and showcasing them in very high quality videos. Due to this, he never got the YouTube rank because, you know, Showing off bots and exploits isn't really a thing Hypixel likes YouTubers to do, so he never ended up getting YouTube rank, but that didn't stop him. He was also big into exotics, which are just different colored armor that sell for a billion times the price. He made websites and bots to find it. He had a massive project planned that would make him blow up in popularity, and it was all going to work He groomed the miner. Yeah, whoops. Well, not just anyone, it was his editor too. And, in fact, it turns out he was barely paying his editor anyways. He was making her edit to him for free, all whilst being a massive creep. 
is like over 20 and she's 15. I'll post a few of the screenshots, but my god, am I crossing the line of getting demonetized here just for your entertainment. Yeah, it was really bad. Alright, let's take a step back from this kind of topics for a sec, because I want to stay monetized. And let's talk about the Colosseum. I was genuinely surprised by how many people didn't know this, but you could actually PvP people in Skyblock in the Colosseum. And if you don't know what that is at all, well, it's an arena for people to PvP and fight in it using their Skyblock gear. But sadly, it was randomly disabled one day and never re-enabled again. But most people don't know why it was actually disabled. I know why, so let me tell you. Mojang has this thing called an EULA that nearly every server breaks anyways, but not Hypixel. Hypixel always tries to stay on the good side of Mojang's EULA as much as possible because, you know, they're a massive server. Once Hypixel wanted to introduce booster cookies and other types of monetization into Skyblock, they ran into an issue. In Mojang's EULA, it states that servers are not allowed to introduce any kind of pay-to-win advantages to the game, where if you spend money, it makes you able to beat other players easier. If Hypixel were to introduce monetization into Skyblock, the Colosseum would break this rule, because technically speaking, players would be able to pay real-life money to buy good armor in Skyblock, to win against others inside the Colosseum. And since the Colosseum was a feature barely anyone used nor cared about, they just yeeted it and got rid of the issue. Road stab. Ah yes, this one. So again, let's have another throwback to mm, late 2019 and early 2020. Back then, Skyblock players didn't have the luxury of today's god potions that just give you every single potion in the game for a very cheap price and give you basically god mode. Back in the old days, you had to brew like 20 plus maxed out potions yourself, which would cost you millions of coins and only last for one hour. But there was a very efficient way to do this. We had to all group up in one place, get someone called a splasher, to splash us all with an inventory full of maxed out potions, which we called God Splash, and each of us would pay them a fee. So instead of one person getting the good potion set, 80 people would get it. It worked pretty well I'd say. But as this method became more and more popular among the community, some smart fellas decided to start capitalizing on it by turning it into a business. Basically, some businessmen set up Discord servers and hired a few splashers and gave them funding to brew potions. Then, they allowed people to buy multiple memberships for in-game coins. Each membership had its own perks and they were on a tier system. The lowest tier memberships usually would grant you one god splash every two hours or so, and the highest tier membership allowed you to call for a god splash anytime you want. This was actually a net win for everyone. The members are happy with the money they're paying since they're getting god mode constantly and it doesn't cost anywhere close to making your own potions. However, in the world of business, there's always scammers. One of the owners of the biggest splash services, called Roadstab, decided to one day just take all the membership money and run away with it at the beginning of the month when everyone had paid their dues. It was pretty awful as he scammed a few hundred people and amassed over 2.5 billion coins, which he then made a post about it on the forums, calling himself a professional scammer and the smartest person alive and thanking the community for being naive enough to trust him. He sold what he scammed for around $12,000 according to him. Yikes. Super high. Oh my god, this one is just stupid. I'll keep it kinda brief, but... So, have you ever had a friend of yours that said, Hey bro, can you let me borrow your super expensive item? I want it for a screenshot. If so, I'm assuming you got very suspicious when they asked that, and you didn't give them the item unless you're very stupid. Well, anyways, this is exactly what happened in our case, but instead of it just being one person, it was like 20 plus people, and not just any people, but the richest players in the game at the time. Back then in 2020, when this story took place, 
the superior armor set and the Midas sword were the most expensive items, and if you had them, you were considered a god endgame player. So, Supa was like, hmm, since I am in the most respected and trusted guild in the game at the time, everyone will trust me blindly. And well, yeah, funny enough, they did. He just walked up to all the richest players individually and asked them to borrow their items, and for some reason, they all just gave them to him. It was that simple. Anyways, yeah, as you expected, he scammed the all and sold it for real life money. What a surprise, right? Furball. Furball the Hammy was a Singaporean tablet YouTuber, popular around the early 2020 to mid 2021. And if you asked any Stablot player today, they will tell you that they remember watching a video or two of his. But one day, he seemingly disappeared from the internet. It's not much of a mystery where he went, but not many people watched his videos explaining where he went, so many people assumed he just left one day. In reality, he took a break for his exams and also had to do a mandatory military service in Singapore. Upon reaching the end of his time in the military, he came back to the internet to chat with a few people, but said that he would not be returning to Skyblock and likely not YouTube as a whole. When we spoke to him, he told us he plans to study economics at university and then pursue his lifelong dream of working in education. The Don Expresso Conspiracy Don Expresso is an NPC that forms part of an event in the Dwarven Mines. The name and skin of the NPC is based on the Hypixel admin Don Piresso, who has been with the company for many years and currently has the position of lead admin. Within the event, Don is extremely rude towards the players, with a particular emphasis on how slow the players are at giving him what he wants. At surface level, this is a funny joke relating to restaurant reviews on TripAdvisor and Yelp, because the whole event is about feeding Don. However, there are rumors that, given the fact that the NPC is based on the lead admin Don Piresso, and that the Dwarven Mines and the Crystal Hollows took literal months to come out, the NPC may actually be based on the developer's thoughts of Dawn during the development of the updates and its multiple delays. Though, these are just rumors and are not something I can confirm, unless one of those new Amazon developers wants to confirm something. Egom Distract Ah uh, yes, the vegan toes Egom Distract. Sorry if those were words you didn't understand. Let me explain. First, who is Egom? Well, Edom was a Stablet Dungeons YouTuber that was doing actually pretty well and blowing up in popularity. Until he decided to cheat on stream, getting himself banned and being denied YouTube rank. After that incident, he kinda just started going the whole cheater route and kept cheating more. Some people started disliking him more for that though. One of them was a YouTuber called Vidin Toes in which he decided to make a diss track, mocking him for being a cheater and getting banned. No idea how much I can show from it without getting striked, but I'll try my best. Truly a masterpiece even though I don't know what half of the bars meant. Dungeon Hub is infested. On at least two separate occasions, the Dungeon Hub in Stablock has been infested, once by chickens and once more interestingly by villagers. The chicken incident I can find no record of, but I know it happened because I was there, and basically throwing eggs in the Dungeon Hub could spawn chickens and everyone just kinda filled the hub up with chickens. But more interestingly, one time, the Jerry spawn ads would actually work in the dungeon hub and spawn natural Minecraft villagers with full emerald trades and everything. This allowed for the obtaining of many rare items such as vanilla enchanted books and other items with no proper MBT data. No idea where it's always dungeon hub where this kind of weird stuff happens. Probably some funny coding. Mega co-ops. In Skyblock, you can play with your friends in a co-op. But sadly, if you have too many friends, like over 10 friends, you can't fit them all in a co-op because there's a limit to how many people you can add. But using one of two buds that existed for a really long time, you were able to invite all of your beloved friends into your co-op. 
you could invite as many people as you wanted, as long as you do the bot correctly. There were a lot of attempts at pushing the limits and seeing how many people you can have in a co-op before everything blows up. And I was one of the people that helped test the first big attempt that was organized by Dio Time, not Time Dio. It's just Time Dio, but in reverse, I guess. But yeah, it was a little fun, but super laggy. The one I was in ended up getting deleted, and they made a bigger one later on, but I didn't join on that one. And funny enough, they were able to accomplish things inside that co-op. Two people called Zingle and 15H raced to get Heart of the Mountain 3 on it, and Zingle won. The fact they were able to accomplish literally anything with this many people without breaking the entire server was impressive. But either way, I think the bugs that let you do that are now fixed and the co-op was deleted. RIP. It was fun while it lasted. Social update. Okay, everyone knows that Stablo gets updates. Sometimes. And usually, updates on this game don't go very well on release, mostly due to how hard it is to code for outdated Minecraft versions in old Java where everything is apparently built on old Skywars or Bedwars netcode. And so far, the community has agreed that the worst update so far that introduced the most trouble into the game has been the Crystal Hollows, especially at launch. But let me tell you about the social update. The social update is, in my opinion, the most broken update. Basically, the social update was supposed to be a little cute update where the more people visit you, the more social XP you get, which allows you to buy more cool things for your island. Pretty simple, right? No, not simple at all. Because the minute the update was released, people were easily able to find exploits with social XP and were able to gain infinite social XP basically. After a few hours, this was fixed. Great, problem solved. No. People realized this update is a little janky and kept trying to find things they can abuse in it. And after only a few hours, people found a dupe with showcase blocks, an item that this update has introduced. This dupe is so brain dead and stupid that all you had to do was put expensive items inside a backpack put that backpack inside a showcase block but keep your GUI open, then remove it from another account that's in your co-op and remove it from your GUI too. It ends up keeping both backpacks in both players' inventories. And this bug was one of the reasons backpacks were disabled for a while and eventually reworked. But it does not stop there. People found ways to exploit and crash islands with the parkour minigame, which also caused dupes. People found ways to do... uh... this? Place more than 10 easter eggs, 4 in a row buds, Lond Island rank names, and a lot more. Even to this day, some of those buds aren't fixed yet, but I think all the game breaking ones are fixed, at least I hope so. And to me personally, I have been massively affected by this update. Basically, I own a museum with really expensive things because I have a hobby of collecting rare in-game items, and I have 8 of the rarest space helmets in a showcase block. One day, me and my co-op members woke up and saw that all of our space helmets were ripe due to a bug with the showcase block. Luckily for us though, admins gave us back our items, so I'm not gonna cry too much about it. And even after a year of the social update being released, me and my co-op still cannot figure out how the social XP still exactly works despite studying it since release. It makes no sense, but I won't rant about it here. Just know it's broken. Okay, layer number 4. Auto dungeons, dual assisted dungeons, gaming chair dungeons. It's no secret that Stablock's high level players have a serious issue with cheating. The game doesn't go very long without some top players being banned and wiped for some form of cheating, and every day the cheaters seem to come up with some new way to beat the system. I have to be careful with what I share about this or else I'll inspire people to copy this and probably have a Hypixel sponsored Hitman show up at my door. But there exists mods that can create predetermined teleport path through dungeon rooms to collect every single secret within them. Without a single user input, combine this with a function to detect which dungeon room a player is in and a mod that can super easily clear dungeon rooms with predefined Hyperion path on maybe a different account and you get yourself a bot that can clear dungeons completely AFK without any human interaction. This basically means you could enter a dungeon, press a button, 
go get a cup of coffee, then return to a fully cleared dungeon, or a band screen. The Great Ruby Pyramid Scheme Around mid-July 2021, Hypixel released the Crystal Hollows update. As with many updates, this opened the door to a whole lot of content, and for the business-minded, a whole lot of Skyblock coins. One player, Hugh Tayo, realized this on day one and began mining gemstones using predefined waypoints after recognizing that gemstone spawns are always in consistent places in the hollows, pioneering a technology that would soon spread throughout the community and used by many people for hours a day instead of getting a real job. Not wanting to be alone in this truly thrilling exercise, they decided to invite some friends to do it with them. Being smart, they also realized that they could make a lot of coins by simply buying the materials for, and then crafting, the gemstone gauntlet, because the requirement to use it were already had by many players, but the requirements to craft it were not. At the low, low cost of 4 million rubies, Utayo could create these and sell them for around 50 million profit each. The only issue was that 4 million rubies was not an easy task around release time, and to buy that many would probably crash the bazaar's gemstone economy every time a gauntlet were to be crafted. Their solution was, naturally, to recruit as many members of Kaushet to mine gemstones for them, offering to buy them from the miners at a stable price in return for their devotion and continued mining. Throughout this entire scheme, Yutayo estimates they crafted 3,000 gemstone gauntlets, using around 12 billion rubies. To put this into context, that's 33% more rubies than there are currently up for sale on the bazaar right now, and over 45 billion coins in profit for Yutayo. This scheme became known as the Ruby Pyramid Scheme, throughout Kaushad and other Stablock communities, despite not actually resembling a pyramid scheme at all, and actually functioning more like a completely normal company, potentially making it one of Stablock's first genuine companies and business operations. Zetro 9 As we just discussed about how Dungeons is infested by cheaters, let me tell you about this person who has gotten world records in Dungeons without cheating. Crazy, right? Well, him not cheating isn't the only cool thing he's done. Let me show you a clip. Yes, this man could memorize every secret, zoom through rooms with no problem, get an S plus perfect rank, get a world record, and perform better than cheaters, all on a 10 FPS potato laptop goes to show that cheating is just a skill issue really. One of his biggest achievements was being the first to get sub 420 and sub 4 of a floor 7, and being the first person to 50,000 secrets. GG. Butterfly Girl 23 Hmm, not sure where to start with this one, but I'll start by telling you that this person that goes by the name of Butterfly Girl 23 had caused over a dozen people to get banned, including their own team, and ruined an entire speedrun category. Now, I made you curious about how someone with such an innocent name can cause this much trouble, right? I'm such a good YouTuber. Okay, so, speedruns exist for basically any game, and this includes dungeons in Skyblock. People always want to go as fast as they can, and for the longest time, a sub 3 minutes run on floor 7 was always thought to be impossible, until Butterfly Girl 23 decided to try and push the limits by using cheats. And so, they gathered a team of 3 other cheaters and decided to have a go at it. From the clip here, we can see that this team lacked so much skill and had no actual strategy and just kinda threw a lot, but they were all hard carried by their cheats which allowed them to beat all of the legit players and get a sub 3 minute run without breaking a sweat. Even Misley, one of the runners in that group, admits it. This of course made legit runners absolutely furious as to how all their efforts to come up with optimized droughts and flawless runs can be just beaten by cheaters. So. A bunch of legit runners kinda gave in to the dark side and decided to start using cheats themselves in order to push the boundaries of the speedrun and get new world records. 
This, of course, did not go well for anyone, as a bandwave came by very soon and got everyone that attempted this run with cheats banned. This is how the leaderboard looked at some point, and the issue with Skyblock speedrunning is that those scores will always be there in-game even though the run was not legit and even though the people running it were banned. Kind of scuffed. There are no pig relics. Man, this one hurts to talk about. Alright, so a while ago, like a long while ago, there was an event that had to do with Technoblade being the mayor of Skyblock after he defeated Dante and took his place. I've already talked about it in the intro of this video. His event introduced a lot of cool things, including Pid Relics. Pid Relics are this drop that are 1 in 20 million to get from killing special pigs in the hub, and only 7 of them were obtainable in the entire server. People thought all of them being found was impossible, but on the last day of the event, the last one was dropped, and the shrine was fully powered. Wait, I just realized these kinda looked like dragon balls. Anyways, we now have 7 super unique and super cool items in the game, right? Well, no. Sadly, currently, they do not exist. One guy called T-Bot was obsessed with collecting unique items and he went above and beyond to collect all of the pig relics by buying them from the people who obtained them. He would spend sleepless nights trying to contact the buyers in any way possible. He would go through their friends list, ask their friends to talk with them, negotiate prices, and eventually he was able to obtain 4 out of 7 of the relics. But sadly, he had a portal in… um this shape on his island, so he was banned for it, and then he was wiped for duping allegations. So there goes four of the relics. The fifth relic is in an Iron Man player's inventory, which means he cannot trade it nor do anything with it, so it's stuck there forever. The sixth relic was actually in the possession of a normal player until recently where it was sadly scammed by a top player through a co-op ad scam, and is just rotting in his inventory as well. He's probably looking to IRL trade it or will get banned with it eventually. The seventh one is the only one that still holds strong till this day, in a display in JC Robertson's museum. You can go there and see it with all its majesty for yourself. Kind of really sad that from seven highly important rare items, only three managed to survive and only one is actually being displayed. F. Okay, let's dive even deeper. Letter 5. Origin Tag Conspiracy Origin tags were an old feature in Skyblock where items would contain the player who obtained them and the day and method they were obtained within their NBT data, which became a cool tool for players to look at on API viewer websites and for museum collectors to verify that the item they collected were not duplicated until one day it was just removed without warning. Coincidentally, the day before, a member of the greatest, most awesome, bestest, biggest, and largest museum in Skyblock was using origin tags to create a mod that would track items as they move around Skyblock and decided to make use of the data they had collected to try and track which items had been spawned in by admins. If items had been spawned in by admins, this isn't really an issue because obviously that's kind of their job and they need to do things. But what he found was that the admin X Hasco X had spawned 23 items on his shared profile, which is supposed to be a legitimate profile, and this is the profiles he shares with Time Dio and a few others. The items spawned ranged from two diamond swords all the way up to the set of Necron armor used on his profile, and constituted 25% of his entire net worth on what is supposed to be a normal profile at the time. The day after bringing this to light, the origin tags were removed and many admins responded to discussion about the topic with the response that the tags were never supposed to be public and that any potential use of them is unintended. Although it is unlikely Hasco is actually the reason these tags were removed, the timing of Thomas's Twitter post coming the day before the tags removal is likely no coincidence. The data collected by Thomas before the removal of the tags is still viewable in the spreadsheet links I linked in the description, if data is your thing. Blue Whale Elephants Okay, so when I tell you about a blue whale or an elephant, you instantly picture an animal, a cute animal, that just loves to be silly and do its own thing in nature. Or, in the case of Stablock, 
They're just very basic cool pets that help you survive longer by making you more tanky or help you farm in your island. Pretty peaceful, right? Well, what if I told you that mixing both of those pets is the recipe for pure destruction? How is that possible? Well, with math. Or too much math. You see, in Stablock, there used to be a bug called pet stacking. You were basically able to have two active pets at the same time, which should be impossible. This also gave you both of those pets stat boosts, making it a very powerful combo for anything. You need a ridiculous amount more damage, just summon two damage pets at the same time using the glitch. Simple. But there was an issue with summoning both an elephant and a whale. If we look at the legendary elephant pet perks, it gives you this one called Walking Fortress, which gives you more health the more defense you have. And if you look at the legendary blue whale pet perks, this one here gives you more defense the more health you have. And alongside the 20% increase to your max health it gives, this makes the server you are in get stuck on trying to calculate your basically infinite health and defense stats, causing it to just give up and crash. This crash was used to ruin people's dungeon runs, and it was, of course, also used to duplicate items, since if you can crash servers on command, you can duplicate items, because of the whole time rollback Doctor Strange stuff, you know, we already talked about this stuff earlier in the vid. So, if you were ever in a random dungeon lobby, and you just crashed out of nowhere, there is a chance someone was trolling and summoned a blue whale and an elephant pet at the same time. Take down Hypixel for $7. On the 3rd of May 2022, an individual abused the account recovery system of GoDaddy, Hypixel's domain host, in order to hijack the website and change it to the following message, saying that Hytale is shutting down development because Riot Games won't pay them, and including cryptocurrency wallet addresses that players could send Monopoly money to for something special that would be given to them in-game. The hacker did this by impersonating Simon with enough personal information that GoDaddy would grant the hacker access to the account with the domain. Obviously, it doesn't take a genius to know that this might just be the worst scam attempt ever pulled off, with the least convincing website ever, and all of the things the hacker could have done with a valuable domain like this this is the best they could come up with. The one good thing about cryptocurrency is that these wallet addresses are publicly viewable, and if you look into them, we can see that for all of their effort, the hacker made off with just three payments, totaling just $6.95 in today's currency. No other parts of Hypixel were affected and no data was stolen. Now, the reason this is related to Skyblock is because it was believed that one of Stablock's most notorious ratters and account stealers at the time was involved in this in one way or another. Ratting has been an issue in Stablock for a very long time, and we've talked about that before. And it's sad to see that these people evolve from stealing accounts into stealing domains and possibly doing worse things because they're suffering no consequences. Admin's house picture. Oh no, this one is just wrong in every way, man. I was debating if I should mention it or not, but I decided to do it, but of course without showing you any info that harms anyone. So, Stablock has an auction house, right? You can put up items on it, and the item that has the highest price usually ends up on top for everyone to see. Very cool, right? Yeah, it's nice unless it's abused for awful purposes. Stablock also has these things called Kate Souls. With Kate Souls, you can capture the name of any player and have it show up as the Kate Souls name. Pretty basic stuff. But one day, a really evil Stablock player found a picture of a Stablock admin's house. I don't know how he found the picture, but he did. He then proceeded to upload the image to Imgur to get a short link for it short enough to fit on a Minecraft username. Then he got an alt account and named it the Imderlin for the admin's house. He then proceeded to capture the account's name with a Kate soul and put it up on the auction house for the highest price possible so it shows up at the top for everyone to see. So essentially, anyone online that browsed the auction house at that time could just simply hover over it, read that the Kate's soul name is an Imderlin, type the link in a browser, and find an admin's house. 
It stayed up there for a couple hours before being taken down and him being banned. Kinda baffling how evil you need to be to come up with ideas like this. And with this, we are done with the fifth layer. Time for the spiciest topics in the last layer. Newborn for coins. I have to be a little careful again with how I cover this one, but what if I told you that somewhere out there, somebody exchanged 750 million Stablock coins, which is around $500 in Stablock gems, for the rights to name someone's firstborn child. On the 6th of March 2021, a streamer who I will not be naming was streaming Stablock when their significant other went into labor. The details around this time were a little fuzzy because the original livestream VOD was understandably removed, but for about 50 minutes, a player of the name Krusty Travis negotiated with the streamer half-jokingly to name his son before eventually settling on the price of 750 million coins. A couple hours passed and, well, this image of a birth certificate was sent. I'm going to protect the identity of everyone here, so there's not much to see. But if this is a real birth certificate, then somewhere out there, a Travis Krusty is awaiting the day he's old enough to understand words and be told the story of his name. I can't believe I have to say this, but seriously, please do not do this. It isn't really that funny and will probably impair this child for life. But I thought it was just too absurd and funny not to share on the iceberg. Hon. Just like some previous entries, me and Tyler debated whether we should include this one or not, but I decided to include it since it's kinda related to the Stablock community. It's August 8, 2020. A girl called Nina and her family gets told by her brother that he sent a Palestinian girl that lives in Russia, who goes by the name of Hon online, a large sum of money around $470, and he also told his family that he's been sending this mysterious Han girl some money over time, but in smaller amounts to help her with her tough life situation she's been telling him about. This, of course, made the family instantly suspicious, and made them want to know more about who this girl is. So his sister, Nina, made it her mission to find out whatever she can about this Han girl. Nina started by messaging Han on Discord and asked her to voice call. Han said that she can't right now and that she will tomorrow, but when Nina tried to message her the next day, she was blocked. This, of course, indicated that something's definitely not right and made Nina search even more. Nina tried to search using Han's supposed real name she's given her brother and found nothing, but when she tried to search using the username Han, she found so many posts about Han on so many different websites related to Stablock, and all the posts were about how Han is a super rich and game tryhard that's maxed out the game and plays 24-7. That's also when Nina learned that Han is actually not a girl. Typical catfish stuff. Nina searched more and found posts about Han on other trading websites, asking to buy and sell coins for real-life money through Bitcoin. They also searched in other places like Discord server chats and found out that Han has also spent a very large sum of money to buy a very expensive PC. Hmm. Okay, so, this mysterious Palestinian Russian girl, Han, that was asking Nina's brother for a lot of money, turned out to be completely lying about everything and was spending the money on buying Stablock coins and a better computer. But what makes all of this even so much worse is that the brother who was being scammed the whole time is diagnosed with autism, and Han knew about that the entire time. They were completely fine taking full advantage of someone with autism, and according to Nina, this isn't the first time this has happened, and her brother has been a victim of psychopath and narcissists before, because his heart is too pure to see the bad in people. Sadly, Han is still out there, and all they did was just change their Minecraft username a few times, first to Dicorse and then to Stay. didn't even put any effort into changing accounts or anything. They also still play Stablock religiously, and either he sold his account or it's him still playing, I'm genuinely baffled how the account is still not banned. It really sucks seeing people out there that do this, 
So, always be careful online, and take care of your friends and loved ones, and protect them from these kind of parasites. Guild Predator. Oh boy, this one is... Um... <clears throat> Okay, so in Stablock there's guilds, right? And Stablock is a game that's played mostly by kids. Yeah, you probably know where this is going already. Again, remember, I'm gonna be tiptoeing over the demonetization symbol here. STU is an 18, now 20 year old Stablock player that has a rather unusual attraction to people who are younger than them. And you know, usually those people like to seek places that are full of young people. And Astio here thought that the best place to do all of their awful acts is in a Stablock guild. They would start off by asking their victim their age, and after that, they start love bombing slowly and being their sugar mommy in game by giving them Stablock coins if they asked for it. And then she would start escalating things by taking the conversation to unusual places. Okay, I don't think I need to describe too much about how things went, so I'll let future Hellcastle that's editing this comment on the screenshots you see on screen now. Um, yeah, hello past Hellcastle. These screenshots are very bad, I can tell you that. There's also too much of them, like, like, I don't know, what do you expect me to comment on these ones, dude? Like, they're just messed up. Astifio's horrible acts had multiple victims, the number of victims that was documented is 8, and their ages range from 15 to 12. Not even old enough to be on Discord, man. Okay, so obviously the moral of the story here is to never trust anyone online no matter how cute the cat in their profile picture is. I swear, it's always people with cute cat profile pictures that end up being the most vile. But I don't know, maybe that might be only something in the Stabla community. Actually, yeah, it probably is just in this community. Damn. Accessing every admin account. Okay, we can finally take a step back from morally messed up things and talk about something that's. well, never mind. So, on January 21, 2021, two friends were messing around with weird code stuff until they stumbled across a very weird bug in Hypixel security. Well, it was more of a flaw. Apparently, they found the ports with vulnerability and they coded the bypass of Hypixel security for join with the admin's account? Yeah, it didn't make sense to me much when I read it, but it did work. They were able to access any admin account they wanted, and they chose to access the accounts with the most power. Here in the screenshots, we can see themselves going on a little power trip, giving themselves a small amount of 10 million Hypixel gold, which is worth around 120 million real-life United States dollars. Yeah, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's a bit too much. They also started playing around with what they can give themselves infinite amounts of. They were able to spawn infinite mystery dust, infinite XP, that gave them max levels instantly, which of course, someone on Twitter instantly pointed out. Then after messing around with a bunch of admin commands, they went onto Skyblock and gave themselves a lot of money and spawned in some admin items, up until an actual admin noticed what's happening and decided to join the party and have a little chat with them. Funny enough, the chat was actually productive, and they told the admin exactly how they found out about the security flaw and helped them fix it, and the admins were nice enough to not ban their accounts and let them keep some things as a little thanks for helping, I guess. And if you're wondering, no, they didn't let them keep the $120 million worth of gold. How inconsiderate. Whoa, wait. You're telling me a story this deep into the iceberg had a happy ending? Well, yeah. Duh. Despite the universe's indifferent cruelty, there is always... Uh, I don't know, I forgot the joke. Ha! You thought we are gonna be ending on a positive note? Oh boy, were you wrong. The phone call. So earlier in this video, even twice I think, I mentioned the topic of ratting, which is basically stealing other people's accounts and computers through fake mods and viruses. Well, one person, who goes by the name Free Money Hub, was one of Stablock's most notorious ratters, and he had stolen so many accounts and so much money from countless players, to the point where a bunch of his victims and their friends decided that something needs to be done about this. So, 
They all gathered each other's and united their forces to find out everything they can about this person and do whatever is needed to put an end to him. And after searching for a while, that group of people found some info about him, like how he's still in school, and they also found his actual mother's phone number. So, in a desperate attempt to get his internet taken away from him, or to make his parents reason with him to stop stealing people's accounts and money, they decided to give his mom a phone call. Hello. Is this good well, enough? Are you the same person I was talking to a second ago, or are you a different person? No, I know I'm the same person. I just I had something to do. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, now I'm aware what <laughs> is up to, and I'm addressing it. All right, that's good. Who are Who are you? Um, I'm someone who has uh, you know, let's just say that I'm one of the people that got the information, because this has been a, a problem for a while. Are you in, are you in the local area? Oh are no, the... I'm I'm quite far away. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Did you are you an adult or are you a child? Um, uh, I am a child. Okay. And so have you been you've you've been affected by? Uh, no, but a few of my friends have. Yeah. Okay. And so they were they were little kids that yeah. he hacked into. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm trying to address it with him. You know, he's difficult, <laughs> but I'm trying. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you have any suggestions. I mean, I'm not a technical person, and I don't really know. Well, I mean, you, you, know. you could probably try to, like, you know, maybe if you want more, like, evidence, you can go through his, his Discord. We've been monitoring him because we have, we have rats in his friend group, if you, a mole, if you will. Uh -huh. um, and so every single time that you've tried to talk to him, he complains, he laughs at you. He knows that you aren't going to do anything, um, so that's why he laughs, and he just continues to do it every single time. Mm-hmm. So, I mean... Getting parenting advice from a child, but... <laughs> no, I mean, he's just hes just very difficult, you know? Yeah, he, and he, I just, he is. He's very, very narcissistic. Yeah, no, I saw one of the emails I got, there was a link to something. Yeah. There was one about yeah. Free Money Hub, yeah, that, and it seemed like they were all mad at him. That, that is the name he uses online. Okay. Free Money Hub's victims had been trying to contact his mom through email for a while, and have sent her some not very nice things out of their spite towards her son. I think he's more concerned about you guys than he is about his parents. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> he, he laughed at you. Um, yeah, so I'm not very scary. Yeah, he does not consider you to be an authority figure. Yeah. No. So, well, I mean, so if you tell me what he's doing, I can tell him not to. Whether or not he listens to me, I'm not sure. You know, and I can, you know, try to, I, I mean, I don't know what else I can do. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I get that. Um, but, I mean, I mean, this is kind of like affecting, like, real world things. Because there, there uh -huh. are, there's real world money involved. There's, you know, computer hacking. So, I mean, so he's, he's actually taking people's coins and making them into real money? Y yeah. <sighs> And do you know how he's doing that? He's um, he's laundering the money. Um, but do you like? Do you know how? Like, uh, how does he through, even know how to do that? Through Hypixel is the server he plays on, um, like through Minecraft. It's complicated, but people will pay real money for those coins, and so he just he just trades it for real money. Um, he also buys him. Because I like I have access to his bank account, and I don't see any of that. Like I see mind. nothing, so well, I don't know where he's putting it. He, he where gets, does he put it? He gets it into like things like Bitcoin. Okay, because he has a bank account and I monitor that. So, yeah, um, if, so he's doing it at places that I can't see? If if he were to do that with a bank account, I mean, it would be a bit suspicious. So he uses like Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies like that. But how, and how do little kids get Bitcoin? They're just little kids. So how well, do they get he, Bitcoin? He's, he's not a little kid. Okay. I mean, I've gone in to talk to him, you know, and I'm like, don't do that. I mean, you know... I don't know if I should go to the police and tell the police my son is doing these bad things. I mean, I really don't know what to do. Um, well, I, I don't think you would want to call the police on your own son. Uh, I mean, I don't. What, but... what he is doing is illegal, though. Yeah, it's stealing. Yeah, stealing and computer hacking. Um, and so it... I, don't, I still don't understand. So if he had somebody write a code for him that if somebody invites him in, then it steals from them? Yeah, and he also has programs so that he can control their computer. 
Okay. I mean, I, I'm just not a technical person. And no, I get that. So, I mean, I could turn off our internet. I, I guess you could do that. But, I mean, like you said, it, that would be very hard to do because he has school and, you know, other things like that. So, can you tell me how he's, how he's finding people? So, what he does is he, he posts it. Um, on like Minecraft, like in the messages. So he says, "Get you will get free coins if you download this program, all right, or something like that." And then they download. And then the little kids do it. Yeah, because they, they, they believe it. it's like a scam. Um, Is there any way that like the Minecraft server can like you know block things like that from happening? Um, yeah, but he finds ways around that, and he um, uses a bunch of different accounts because he's stolen so many accounts that he can just use them all. Um, it doesn't matter if one oh, of them so, gets banned. So, so the people accounts that he breaks into, he keeps them. Uh, he he keeps them, or or they go away. It doesn't matter, um, because he steals the passwords to them. Okay, well, I'll try to talk to him again and see. I mean, I just don't. I'm not sure that he's going to listen to me. Um, and I think that the banana squishing really, you know, might have been more effective than <laughs> me telling him not to do it. Yeah. Um. The banana squishing the mom just mentioned was something that happened a few days prior to this voice call, where one of the people he's stolen accounts and money from turned out to be living very close to him. So, he decided to find out where he lives and go smear bananas all over their house out of spite. Yeah, so, like, I, he was, he, I think he cried for a couple of hours today. He cried for a couple of That's hours? Cool. That's I think so. Yeah. That's cool. So... And what if he changed his ways? Would people want to be friends with him or not? Really? Uh, I do not think so. Uh, he would have to, like, get a completely different name. Uh, yeah, you would... Oh, my God! I just took the phone from his mom and hit her! There is so much wrong with the phone call you just heard. And I don't think I need to do a whole psychoanalysis commentary about it for you to realize how sad everything about it is. Shortly after the end of the voice call, Free Money Hub went back to doing what he always did like nothing happened. But a few days later, he seemed to have started showing up less and less on the internet, and then disappeared for a while. This may be due to the fact that his mom put the PC in the attic and started unplugging the internet a lot more often. I couldn't find solid evidence about where he is now in terms of online activity. Anyways, thank you for sticking till the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed your monthly or maybe even yearly dose of Skyblock lore. We might do another one of these at a later date. Until then, we'll be trying to fix our upload schedule. Oh, and big shout out to Eggblon. If you liked this iceberg and watched it till the end, then you'll also need to watch his Skyblock iceberg he made a few years ago that inspired this video. Alright, see ya and have a nice day.